Now let's uh, jump into this uh, replay where Dumbala is our hero. Cassia, he went for. Both Adexo and Dumbala are moderators. It seems My pleasure. Thank you too, guys. Thanks, four, thanks to Hero's Heart three, for making this happen, two, really. One. It's fun Let to watch people battle. who are better than you play Hearts, the only cage. Yeah, Not that's pretty. really tough for some people to find people better than them. Back. Now, these two guys are mods on the channel, and uh, actually, it's the first game for Cassia ever. He's never played before. He didn't even finish the tutorial. So, you are attacking, which is good. So obviously, most people won't be playing on Sky Temple right away, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna give you the first tip. I don't know if you use quick cast or not. But when you use A click, A left click, you can go in A direction and make sure you keep attacking. <laughs> so you're actually right clicking behind their towers and that's actually highlighting one of the problems. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I ever played Hearts, I did the exact same thing as you, Dumbala. The exact same thing. Cassandra was watching and she, she's uh, she's witness to it. I walked into the enemy towers because I had never played MOBAs before. So the reason that people always move around the map with a left click is so that when you run into trouble, your character starts attacking. And that's the big difference from using right click. Let's, let's say I want to attack these guys, right? I can right click them and it'll work. But if I misclick, I will move right next to them. And that's not something I want to do as a ranged character. You're back. So you probably right clicked somewhere. And uh, maybe behind the gate or something. I don't know. Maybe you accidentally. Maybe what you wanted. You were here. You wanted to click here. But you clicked on the minimap. So you want to be careful of that. Not clicking on the minimap. That's actually a function that you can change. Smart commands through minimap. So when you right click, right click is actually called smart command because it interacts differently with everything. If you right click on the tribute, like we saw on last map, uh, you will channel it and take the tribute. If you right click on the turret, you will pick up the turret, like uh, on Volskaya Foundry. But if you right click on an enemy, you will attack them. If you right click on terrain, you move there. That's why it's called a smart command because Blizzard has dedicated many different, and you know, that's normal in games. So when you enable this, smart commands will not be used on the minimap. And I actually think many new players will find it very comfortable to tick this box so that when you accidentally click on the minimap, you're not going to this spot on the minimap. You're going right here next to this tower. I'm used to using the minimap and I rarely ever misclick. So I actually want to be able to right click here on the minimap to go to the top right of the map. But that's something to pay attention to. Now, new players will also have camera lock, which means you do not lose sight of your character. No matter how far you pan off the screen, your character will remain in it. As you advance in the game, you will want to turn it off by pressing L so that you can pan anywhere so you can take in the whole map. But as a new player, it's not that bad to begin with it. You can always press spacebar to find out where your character is. But camera lock is alright. So you used your Q, which is good. Huh? And you used your blind. And Cassie is actually a bit of a tougher hero for a beginner because she has short range. Her survivability comes from moving a lot, and it's not a good character for uh, a new player. So remember to press Z to mount up and gain 30% movement speed. There's also various ways to heal in this game. Um, 
That's one way to heal, but it'll cost you a death. So you use Fend. Nice to use various different abilities. Uh, one way to heal is to walk back to this place where you spawn. Another way is to press B, Hearthstone, you channel for 6 seconds, you then teleport back to the Hall of Storms, and you instantly restore a lot of health and mana. And staying here, you get more regeneration. But you've also got these healing fountains, we call them Moonwells in Warcraft 3. You can click them and heal once every 120 seconds. And if we actually look at uh, Nazibo, for instance... Uh, we look at Nazibo. He just drank from the fountain. We now see that he has half full life. He's got f another 40% health that will be regenerated in time. That's the effect from this healing fountain. And you can see the cooldown at any time by looking over the fountain. You can also check at the bottom left at your character, your stats panel. You see this number is also your healing fountain availability. So you don't need to find a fountain to know when you can drink again. So we go back to Cassia. So now when it comes to making decisions on where to go, I mean, this is a pretty confusing map for beginner, but you're generally best off to just go with your teammates and where there's not too many opponents. There's also a colorblind mode, yes, which I can show. And it looks like this. You'll have teal versus um, orange. I had no idea where to go. Very understandable. I mean, I played like 20 games before I even knew what map I was playing on. I It actually makes sense what you're doing. Like, I, I could not have thought of doing this. New Warcraft patches out? That's awesome. No patch notes yet. Okay. I'll take a look later. It actually makes a lot of sense because you took the most direct route to where one of your allies was. Uh, Greymane. I could not have predicted that. So let's talk about actually generally the, the decisions you have as a player. There's three lanes, top, middle, and bottom. Blue flags on the map highlight creep camps, murk camps that were previously taken by your team. Red camps, red flags is, uh, well, orange in this case. Let's, let's turn off colorblind mode again. Um, red camps are ones that were previously taken by your opponent. And yellow is what's still available. So one cool thing to do always is to take camps that are available. They provide additional pressure, additional strength. Basically, see a MOBA like this. You've got your heroes, but there's also always minions spawning. Every 20 seconds, there's a wave of minions, Dumbala. Yeah, And those minions will almost always be completely evenly matched if you do not interact with them. It actually turns out not to be true, but they should be evenly matched. So if you kill one enemy minion wave, your wave survives, theirs is dead, and you will deal some damage to their structures. The goal of the game is, of course, to destroy the enemy core, but you can only get there, it's only vulnerable, when you kill both the keep and the fort in one lane. So everything you do should be, in some way, dealing siege damage. The goal isn't to kill enemy heroes, that's just the means to an end. There's many ways to kill the enemy forts and keeps. One is to grab this bruiser camp here. They call it the bruiser camp. They took it. Now there's these big buff dudes helping and they easily cut down the minions. Right? So you're running away when you're getting hurt. That's good, but you can keep running. So it's perfectly fine to run and not contribute, let's say. It makes sense to always want to be proactive, but sometimes proactive is saving yourself. And in this game, and as many new players in HOTS will have, you're actually not going to have a healer on the team. I'm so the first thing you want to do is when you start a game is to take stock of whether any of your allies can heal you. You may not know this when you begin. I can just say that in this case there is none. So anytime you're hurt, you either need to find these regeneration globes, the little blue hearts. They come from killing minions, the middle minion in fact. So collect a lot of those, or drink from the fountain, or hearthstone. 
Uh, as a damage dealer, or you generally want to just do that. Go back home. If you're half-life or less. Then you won't die as much. So, for Cassia, actually, you would like to always use your Q. So you can uh, use your Q and throw it at people. So you're doing a lot of auto-attacking, but you have a full mana pool, so you can just use your skills more liberally. And in Cassia's case in particular, Q is the one you want to use the most. It's short cooldown, it's spammable, it's long range. Try practicing throwing that at people. It does an initial attack and then a jagged perpendicular side strike. Don't think I'll just let you die. And as Cassia, you don't want to use E as much, only to finish someone off. Keep in mind that E is a very high risk maneuver. You immobilize yourself, you telegraph where you're going. It's kind of like in a real life street fight. You suddenly do a split to the floor and then you try to punch them in the nuts. Cool if it works, may disable them. But if it doesn't work, they're gonna knee you in the face. So do a lot of lightning fury, throw a lot of spears. Bloodsport, hell yeah. So you just picked your heroic ability, ball lightning. It keeps bouncing between enemies. So make sure to throw it on clustered enemies. You joined the big fight, which is always good practice. You went in the correct direction. All, will burn. All right. So now if you look at the map, Dumbala, you've got people in every lane, which is nice. You're killing minions, which helps. And I just want you to mentally prepare that if someone comes for you, because you're basically like a mewling, a mewling kitten newborn, if someone attacks you, just to start walking away, practice that. So instead of trying to damage them like you're doing now, the moment someone shows up, walk away. And only when your allies start the fight, you try to help by throwing your Q, by throwing your W and throwing your E. Especially this guy with the wings is scary. So I think you're using right clicks on them. That's why you sometimes awkwardly move right next to them before fighting. So you really need to get used to that A left click. Or if you smart cast, just A. Yeah, 100% using right clicks. Uh, that's, that's visible. So now... You're gonna come back from life at some point. And then what to do? The bottom fort needs defending. There's a big red minion wave and there's three heroes. But you've only got one ally to help there. So going bot at this point is most likely suicide. This is when we accept sunk costs and say, okay, that one is gone. And you actually saw that Kira, this dark light player, he wanted to defend. And that's basically... That, that wasn't very useful. So you went to the other lane, which I actually like. So now you let three people defend here, and the two of you can attack the tower. So go ahead and follow Greymane and kill some towers. And you do. You killed the wall, which is also cool. It doesn't do anything except block. But now... And this part isn't easy, of course. If you look at the minimap... The enemy team actually was missing. We must yeah. retreat. Remember to just walk back when you're half-life. Wow, big fight at the boss. <laughs> Holy crap. Did you even see this when you were playing? <laughs> oh, that was cool. You saw it? Okay. Yeah, because you were dead. You had plenty of time to watch. Yeah, that was a raw zom zombie wall. <laughs> Guardian. So, just to fill the gaps here, uh, Dumbala, on this map, the Sky Temple, you need to stand on these circles when they have a logo on the map like this. Like, the top is also a possible temple place, but only when you see this logo on the map, you can stand on it and activate the beacon. You can also see in the bottom right, there's north, center, and south. The center and south are blue, 
so they're activated. And the bar shows how much lasers they have left in them. When you stand on it, you have to fight the guardians. And it will directly shoot lasers at the enemy fortifications. So they will die without you even having to go there and risk yourself. So it's a, a long range weapon of mass destruction. So you're standing on the point and doing that job now. Now all of its power has been spent. Yeah, you're gonna win this. You got this, dude. You got this. You got this. You helped. That was a big assist. Success. Success. All right. You made him run. Yeah, the dragon helped a bit. I mean, Deathwing. Nice kitty. So now you should help your teammates. Uh, even though they're not fighting over anything. So you're gonna be pushing with Deathwing, which I think makes a lot of sense. I remember this when I was noob and playing other MOBAs. I just stay in a lane and I do things until I die. Now, flank by Nazebo, what do you do? Do you attack the dudes? You just go for the keep. And honestly, that's not the worst thing if you can get the keep. You will get catapults forever, but your death is temporary. However, you didn't quite get it. Maybe if you threw a few Qs and spears. And you have fallen back to the body bank. But you've only died eight times. I was playing with uh, a Jaina that died 13 times in about this time span. So, <laughs> I mean, eight is quite a lot, but we can work on that. We should play together sometime, actually. We'll be fun. On voice. Bring these mercenaries to heal. You're gonna push with Deathwing again. Try to get that keep that cost you your life the last time. Now again. This keep is your Alamo. Where are you? You pushed in again. So you never back down from a fight. But it's actually one of the best things you can do. Adexo is so cute. Cheerleader. Ay, ay, ay. Nice. You won this game. You won your first game. You had a good player on your team. 